Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Let's cook up some poke salad. Uh, and it's not salad, it's salad with a T on the end. Um, this is a staple of the South back from way back when. Uh, most people don't really cook it anymore. Don't really have a need to. Um, a lot of, one thing, there's a lot of information lost through generations of people. So now everybody that is alive thinks, oh, that's a poisonous plant, don't touch it. The reason they think this is because the easiest way for grandma to keep a young'un from eating berries that would kill him is say, hey, them berries is poisonous, don't touch them. In fact, they're extremely medicinal. A few berries will help you with inflammation. The greens are very good, provided they are cooked right. Um, but if a young'un just comes over here and starts pulling these berries off and eating them one right after the other, they will kill him. So technically, yeah, it's a poisonous plant. Um, it's very medicinal, has a lot of uses. I've got other videos on the medicinal properties of poke salad. But I wanna show you today, if you're out foraging and you want something good to eat, these greens are very good. Now there is some misinformation connected with this part of it. A lot of people say, oh, you can only cook them in the early part of the year. Well, yeah, that's what you were told because that is obviously when those greens are the best. That's those young tender greens, that's what's good. Even collard greens, turnip greens, when they get big, old and bitter, they get a stronger taste. They're not any more poisonous than they were when they first popped out of the ground, really and truly. However, right now, most medicinal plants are at the height of their power. So yes, they are a little more toxic now than they were before. But if you boil them a couple of times, strain the water off, they're very good to eat. A lot of people will, after they boil them, they will skillet fry them in with some eggs, different ways of preparing this dish. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook them like I cook turnip greens. So what we will do is we're gonna harvest some of these greens. I'm gonna show you a little about how I harvest them, especially for this time of year. And then I will discuss with you how we're gonna prepare them. And we're just gonna put some ham hocks in there after we boil them three times, strain the water off, then we're gonna season them up and cook them. So right here, what I do is a lot of the times I take this plant and I take my knife and I come in here and I find one of these little plants and I, I cut it off even with the ground and I throw it away. I don't fool with it. However, today I am going to steal a few of these plants off. But now the one thing I want to share with you, and I have an abundance of this, so I'm not being wasteful with anything really and truly. The birds have eaten everything on some of these that are ripe. There's a few ripe berries there. But you see that this time of year, the bugs absolutely start eating this plant up. I don't want no bunch of uh, bug ridden, and I'll show you what to look for. You see this little bitty worm right here? See him crawling? That's your culprit, okay? Uh, I don't want any of that. None, not, none whatsoever. You can eat this. You can come in here and you can reach in there and be very selective and you can pick you some greens off of here. You're just gonna find it very difficult to do that. So come with me. Here back a little while ago, I cut some back. And what it does, this now after you've cut it back, it puts out new growth because this plant grows from this big giant root that's in the ground. And every year it will grow another plant from the same root. That plant will die in the winter. It'll get wind blown, snow on it. It don't snow here much, but 
whatever and it'll break off and it'll put up a brand new set of shoots out of the ground so let's go look and see over here where i've got some fresh shoots coming up out of the ground all right right under here i got to looking where here i i would this ain't the place i was originally going to in case you was wondering uh but back early in the year i came through here with a lawnmower and i ran over this area so technically right here so i've got some bad i won't pick that off but i have and some of this has been eat on it's okay you just don't want to get the worm he didn't eat everything what he's eat on is not hurt uh you see right here there's part of a cocoon in that you want to look for that such as that throw that away because this time of year you're looking for creepy crawlies but what I have got is a young tender set of shoots that will go in my basket. This is what I'm looking for. So technically you had to think ahead just a little bit. And some of this is, is getting eat up. Uh, it's, it's hard right now to fight the critters over everything. We're going to look around. We're going to find enough to cook. We may not have a huge meal. We are going to find enough to cook. Now you can see I have not really beat the critters to any of this oh. they have gotten to it so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to salvage what we can out of this which is probably not gonna be a whole lot don't look like i knew these plants were here but it's hard to this time of year to not get what the worms is getting so we're gonna look around we're gonna find some plants that's not been eat slam up but if you'll cut this plant back see right here is one coming up out of the ground you have got some brand new shoots coming up good plant to eat most of that has been eat up. Okay, there's a plant right over in here that has not been eat slam up. We're going to take it and wash it real good. So we're looking to see what is on these leaves. And I'm tearing the bad stuff that, you know, dead off that I don't want. Picking. Somebody had asked me anyway, could you pick and eat off of a grown plant? Well, obviously, yes, you can. Oh. Uh, it is not ideal. I mean, this it's it's like collards. They get more bitter the older they get. So anything out here on these ends that are younger and more tender, but usually that is where the critters is going to start eating first too. I don't want to cook the berries, so I am picking them off. I don't know that there's anything wrong with the berries. I just don't want them. Not in my greens. All right, I looked up right here and found another very young plant, and it is strictly due to the fact that I cut it off with a lawnmower on accident, actually, with this one. The ones I purposely cut down, the bugs beat me to. So there's a lot of young tender leaves on this and I have picked and choosed and we got enough to cook. It hadn't been as easy as I was hoping this video was going to be when I planned it and come out here and cut this other stuff down. But hey, that's how life is. My, ah, I forgot about this big old plant hanging right out here in the edge of my yard. It has got some pretty leaves on it, y'all. We are definitely going to get some of these. And there are some young tender leaves up here toward the top. A lot of small leaves. And yes, behind me, y'all, somebody asked in the other video when I come walking right out through here with that wild lettuce, was this elderberries? Yes, I planted all these elderberries, but the birds is eating all the right ones. So I figured out if you hang some bags and CDs up, it'll move in the wind. It 
kind of helps with the birds. It is not 100% like, you know, if you put that up, they're going to leave it alone for sure. Uh -uh. they probably still going to get a good bit of it, but you might slow them down where you get what you want to. Let me look right over here. This. I want the prettiest leaves, and I'm, I guess I'm just being picky. I just wanted you to get an idea where all from this plant I was getting, because a lot of people think, oh, you can only get the little shoots when they come up out of the ground early in the spring. Late in the year, you can't eat it no more. So anyway, we're going to... We fixing to bust that meal. And I'll either die at the end of this video or we'll finish it. And you'll see me post another video in a few days. If I don't ever make another video, well, you might not want to try this. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend picking them because that ain't seasoning on there. <laughs> I have got cold water on. I'm just gonna dump my greens off in here. And uh, so you see I got some pine so I got a garbage can right over here. Peek through it. And uh, at this point I need to get me a, I got a clean ice cream bucket. That's what I put my clean greens in. Cause we're gonna take them outside and cook them. Just like any other green, you want to strip that stem out. And I'm making a mess, y'all. Put my green in there. So this is a good bit of work. You know, I mean, it's like any other green. Now these little bitty tender stems, wash them good. Throw the stem out, but you don't have to strip every little bitty leaf, okay? I'm making sure today I am washing stuff because I know there's a lot of folks think I really don't be washing stuff. They think I do. Let's see what we're doing. I ain't as redneck as a lot of y'all think I am. I'm pretty bad, though. Okay, we got all of that washed and we've got them in our ice cream bucket. Now we, we just cooking for me tonight. Uh, obviously Michelle ain't gonna eat no poke salad. Everybody's gone. I've got two or three days that I'm gonna stay here, work, film. I've got uh, an engagement the weekend I have to be involved in. They all left and went to a wedding. So We've got several videos that I'm gonna to try to get done this weekend while it's peace and quiet. Cooking poke salad is one of them because nobody else here is gonna eat it but me, and I like it. So let me get started boiling it. We're gonna do this outside. No more than a half, I could do it in here, but discarding water, I just, I don't know. I wanna get outside and cook it outside. So the, the big thing is I can get it to a boil faster outside than I can in here, and you gotta boil it three times. So that's the biggest issue. So let's go get started. Okay, let me tell you something right now. Before you go get your wife's or your own boiler and come out here and put it on the cooker, I have a special boiler that I use out here on this. Normally I use that bigger stock pot, but no more than I am cooking today. This is gonna work for me. I'm gonna put my greens in it. Uh, you see, just from being in the water right here, I wanna show you something. The little bit of water that is in there is green. You see that? That is what we're getting rid of, all right? The reason you don't wanna just go get every good pot that you've got and bring it out here is because this gas cooker, and it may just be mine, yours may not do this, soots up the bottom of my boiler. So I have not got it real high because obviously I don't wanna melt this plastic 
Hey, it ain't really pla it is plastic, but it's got metal. You you see what kind of boy I got, you know. I ain't gotta go into all that. But what we're doing is you wanna bring this to a boil, boil it for a second, cut it off, strain all the water off. You're diluting down and getting out the medicinal properties, the toxicity of it. You boil this, cut it off, strain the water off. Boil it a second time, strain the water off. Technically, you're supposed to be able to eat it the third boil. I go ahead and boil it the third time, especially this late in the year while medicinal properties is at their highest. We're in August now. So I boil it three times and I strain the water off the third time. I pour the water out three times. Clear about this. I don't want anybody getting sick. Most people say that pour it out twice, you're good to go. I pour it out three times, especially late in the year. Early in the spring, you probably can get away with two times. The fourth time I put it in there, I had my season, I boil it, I cook it, I drank the juice, all that business. You get what I'm saying? So I want to be very, very plain that you're diluting down the medicinal properties and getting rid of them because this medicine is too strong. When you eat it on the third bowl, you're still gonna get some medicinal qualities out of this plant. It is very good for you. It is very good for inflammation and such as this stuff in your body. It's good for you, good, good for your gut. If you don't boil it enough, it's bad for you. So we've got this heated up. I'm gonna let it boil. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be cutting the camera on and off through this process because it will take way too long. You're gonna see me every time I bring it to a boil, every time I pour it out, I'm gonna cut the camera on and off every time I do this. And then when we're done, uh, I'll bring my fresh water out here in this ice cream bucket. So I'm gonna leave it set aside. I'm gonna cut the camera off, go feed my chickens. I'll be back in a little bit. Y'all, I want to boil this a few minutes. I don't want to just bring it to a boil. I want to let it boil a few minutes now because we want to make sure we get what we've got to get out of it out. Where do I want to pour this? I'm going to pour this over here by my shed, okay? Because this scalding hot water is going to kill the grass and stuff wherever you pour it. So I got me a stick, and I know y'all can't see but I am straining to keep from losing my plant, my greens. Did you see how yellow and green that water is? Okay, I know I'm going to be killing some of my plantain right here, but I have about harvested all it and I have another big patch. Anyway, you see how yellow that is? I got me some more water. Clean water. I might have get something else to take my water in. Y'all see that thing you can cheek on? Oh. So we're going to let that come to a boil again. All right, y'all, we at boil number two. I'm gonna let it boil a minute. We're not gonna immediately cut it off as soon as it comes to a boil. Let it boil there a few minutes and then we'll strain the water off. All right, that is probably good enough. I, I decided to do a little different. This is one of my cooking grates. I 
think we're gonna have to use it this way so that I can no. Alright. Come over here. You see now we left, we're gonna water. I got fresh water right here. And we're gonna go one more time. Bring it to a boil. Okay, we're gonna get it to a boil this time, pour the water out, and then we're gonna take them inside and finish them off, okay? Because I wanna cook in the house. I. I've got some other projects I am fixing to film, making some deer sausage. I went and picked up some fat. So I've got my ham hocks I'm gonna put in this in there and see this time that water is not as dark still a little bit of darkness to it but not as much and I know it's hard to tell with all the bubbles but you can kind of see this is the third time we're going to strain it off this time and then we're going to take it in the house and cook it Gotta go get some more water, but I'm gonna actually that's probably enough to cook because we're not gonna just boil it, bring it down. We're gonna cook it this time. Cooking it. I'll come clean up my paraphernalia. So I put some water in it because the pan's hot. That's fixing to go out. I'm going to cat in the house. Let's go in there and cook it. Okay, y'all. We got the greens in this pot. There's not a lot of them. This is one serving. Look at him. Local grocery store. I went and got me some ham hocks. Oh, y'all, this is going to be some fine eating. So what we want to do is drop one of them ham hocks in there. We're gonna put two of them in there because we want it good and greasy. The next thing you want to add is this is black pepper, old cheap brand. We're gonna season this up good. And they're gonna boil a little while here. I'm put my knife back up here. Y'all like my knife holster. Okay, we got to find the salt. Okay, and you know we be liberal with salt, but don't overdo it. I like a good bit of salt. We'll leave that out. So right now, there is a couple of different ways you can cook this. There is this method where we're just going to boil it. We're going to eat it over cornbread. My wife cooked some cornbread and left it here, and that is how I'm going to eat this. A lot of people take this green now, strain all the juice off, and they put it in a skillet and fry it scramble some eggs with it so there's several different southern recipes now i don't know what the yankees do i just know what the good old southern folks do <laughs> y'all don't take offense to that now i just know how we cook it down here um and this is a couple of different methods now like i mentioned early in this video a lot of this knowledge has been lost because the older generation that was poor 
didn't have nothing, actually lived off the land, actually done all this kind of stuff, has died off. The generation after them got refrigerators and got stuff and they lost all the knowledge of preserving meat and, and foraging and how to live off the land. And the generation that's alive now is like, well, we don't know how to do nothing because nobody told us. But we, you know, it wasn't there. There was a generation that knew how and they just forgot because they didn't have to do it and got away from it. And that's totally understand. I'm not throwing stones at any of the generations. This is just where we're at today. So now we have a generation that is seeking for this knowledge because we're looking at, hey, we possibly would have to go back in the future to some of this possibly. So you need to know how to do it. Are you going to eat poke salad all the time? Probably not, unless you just really develop a taste for it and go like, wow, it's good because it grows all summer. It's very heat tolerant. Uh, it is a very good plant. You just have to be really careful with it. So we're going to get this cooked down and flavor it up and we're gonna see what else we can throw together to go with it. So hang with me. I'm doing a little different. I've got my deer meat right here. This is what I'm gonna cook. And I am not gonna cook all of this. It's a bag of most likely tenderloin, I think pieces of deer steak anyway that I had cut up and vacuum sealed. I always put my meat in there and go to cooking it before I ever start cutting my vegetables up. And then I get to rushing and in a hurry and can't talk, can't think, can't function. Get the I can't. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hand. All right. And I've got some other peppers that I picked that had some bad areas on there. I'm just going to fillet that off of there. Uh, the rest of the pepper is good. Now these is, I tell y'all about these peppers right here, these bells, this turning yellow colors and such. I bought them at the grocery store and saved the seed and just planted them seeds. Y'all, this is a forever more cutting knife. I've been toting this knife because I just wanted to get some video of it Y'all, at some point, probably mid-winter, something, I'm going to either, I, I don't know, I, this knife's going to go to somebody. I made this a right-handed holster. That is why I put the blade in backwards when I'm wearing it on my left hip. It is made for the right hip. Obviously, if somebody wants it left-handed, you can wear it as I do. It is, I'm kind of getting a liking to that because I don't know, I, when I when I pull it out, it's, I don't know, one of them deals. So I'm cutting up and I have, see like this pepper here, it had some bad area on it and I don't know if that is hurt. Yeah, there is some moldation right in that bottom. I'm gonna cut that off, inspect your stuff good. Like I said, I am only feeding me. I'm not feeding my kids or my family tonight. So I am probably not going to cut all them jalapeno seeds up. I want some pepper, but I do not want the heat. A few seeds I can deal with. I could eat all the seeds, but there's really no purpose in it. I'm not trying to burn the hair off my tongue. But anyway, I saved these seeds out of this thing. There is another spot of that mold. But I do like this knife, and I, I may give it away sometime around Christmas. I may put it up for sale. I may auction the thing off so that everybody that wants it has a fair shot at it. I don't know what it's worth. I can tell you if I put my price on it, it's not going to be real cheap. But the blade design is really thick. It's got that hole in it that has no purpose. That was a bolt hole in the end of that plow. It's kind of pointed. So I just simply forged the tip off and, and there's nothing fancy about it. But the sheath is rawhide, got a feather on it. You see that rawhide on there? I'll get a close up of it one day before we do anything fancy with it. Oh, and I've got a bunch of banana peppers. 
I think I'm gonna cut, where's that seeds? Oh man, the seeds are way on up in there. And this one, I'm gonna do it like that. And the seeds are not hot in this. I just don't want a bunch of seeds and what I'm fixing to cook is my biggest issue. These right here, y'all, are not hot at all. These are sweet bananas, and I wound up with a heap of them. So we just doing some sauteed deer meat and such to go with our poke salad. I told y'all we'd just throw something together. And I have done talk till I run my battery down in my phone. And I've had to stop and charge it up. I've been filming two or three videos. So, try to get y'all plenty of stuff to watch where y'all ain't gotta be watching, you know, Hollywood stuff on TV. I, I know y'all don't be liking to watch old Hollywood. You know, they, man, they'll be putting all kind of old ungodly stuff on that TV. Stuff it. Stuff that us normal folks don't care to look at, you know. I think it's important to kind of, kind of mind what you were watching and are taking in and, and getting comfortable with, you know what I mean? That, that's what it's all about. It, it ain't. It ain't about. Well, I'm going to hell if I look at this. No, it's more about ain't just getting real comfortable with some really bad stuff. Just getting used to it. I don't. I don't want to be used to it. I really don't. Y'all, that pepper there ain't that no whole lot of seed in it. Did that a little bit. Fix me, get me a fist full of this deer meat right here. Some of it I may cook. Y'all see, there's some, there's some scrap pieces in the end of that, but they is some fine pieces of steak right up in there. That there's a mite thick. I may have to fillet it a little bit. That's probably more than I'll eat right now. Let's season it up. So we're gonna use a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of camp dog. You boys down there in South Louisiana, y'all better watch out. Now I'm coming for you with this camp dog. Y'all didn't know I had none of this, did you? You can't buy it up here. D-Wayne sent it to me. And I like that garlic salt. All right, let's throw this in the skillet over there when it gets hot. put way more vegetables than I got room to cook. I don't know why it's a curse. But hey, we'll make it work. Trust me, we're gonna make it work. These vegetables ain't gotta do nothing but steam. I don't want them cooked to a mush anyway. So. Hit it with that camp dog. A little more garlic salt. Come on. That's gonna be some kind of good or fine. Yep. 
it. Juice down in there is, is a keeping that deer meat from a drying out. While them vegetables kind of set up out of it and steam more or less, it's, it's just about ready to eat. I, I don't cook that too done. Whoo, y'all. It's been a busy day and I ain't, I don't know that I got a whole lot done, but now I got my face burnt red and my forehead white. We're gonna go ahead and say grace. Lord, we thank you for the woods and the creek. We thank you for the food we eat. We thank you for the fish that swim. We thank you for all of them. We thank you for the birds that sing. We thank you for everything. We thank you for the plants that grow. We thank you for the white-tailed doe. God bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to put this old rag back on my head because y'all don't need to see how ugly I am. I happen to look somewhat a little bit better without it. Now, I wouldn't joshing y'all about this cornbread now. My wife can cook up some cornbread. And I realize my tea glass is in the way right there. I don't know how y'all do things where y'all come from. But now, I like to eat, and supper is my main most meal. Now, we fix the pool right up here close to us, these poke salad. And y'all, if something happens and I don't make near another other video, you'll know, hey, don't do your pokes out of that way. <laughs> Come on. I really, I want to eat that piece of ham hock in there too, but I like that juice down in them cornbreads. Oh. I should have got the other, there it is. Get this spatula right here where I can. And, and y'all, I sliced me up a tomato right here. I got so much stuff over here to eat, I, I don't know what to eat first. But anyway, I wanted to keep that cornbread where y'all could look at it. That's got that yellow cornmeal in it. Mama left me that hen to eat while she was gone. But now y'all, I know there's a lot of men out there that if something happened to their wife, they don't, I don't think they'd make it long. Cause they don't know how to cook, not near a bit. I'm gonna tell you about me. There's one thing that I have guaranteed in my life that I'm not gonna die of, and that's starvation. And it sure ain't gonna be because this old country boy don't know how to cook his own food. Now I like my wife's cooking, and she is a five more fine cook. You can see by this pone of cornbread right there. That she is good cook. And she, you can tell by my gut that she feeds me good. But now if I got to feed myself, I'm, I don't want to be a barely getting by. Oh, come on. So, main most thing that we doing right now, we're going to see what this poke salad is like. And I like mine doctored up. I know somebody said, oh, just eat it like it. No, I, I'm, I'm eating it like I want to. I, I like all that on my turnip greens. <laughs> Somebody knew I was going to do that. Mmm. That poke salad pretty good now. Dear me. Oh, man. Hmm. Mm. I'll try not to smack, but I'm not going to make no guarantees. Mr. Jack Jarman, this is them celebrity tomatoes you told me to grow. They show all good. Yes, sir. 
one thing I don't do while my bunch is gone, and that's do without. <laughs> Roscoe. No, he ain't see him. He got it. <laughs> well, I got some sweet tea. I got deer meat, fresh vegetables out of the garden, poke salad I picked, tomatoes I grew, cornbread that my lovely wife made. Y'all, you can't beat a meal like this. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. But I will suggest you ought to like to do it the way I do it. That's a new one on y'all. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one. Roscoe, you want another bite out right there, dear me? That's good stuff, ain't it, son? Oh, yeah. Each of these fixing go pull a freight train. Oh, yeah.